Thank God we are back. Yes. Last week was a busy week for us, but we're just so grateful uh, to be before you, whether you're at home or you may be driving, but we just thank God for this evening. Um, as you look around, we know that many people are still suffering. Yes. People are waiting on their uh, stimulus check. <laughs> uh, some are waiting to go back to work. Uh, no, I notice in Georgia, all the malls are beginning to open up. Oh, wow. Uh, the malls here in the uh, city of Atlanta. And so we must pray for everybody, even during this time. We have been studying the book of Joshua, the first chapter, and we want to continue on in verse number 10. But before we get to verse 10, God had spoken to Joshua. Before then, he was encouraging him to be strong and, and courageous. courageous. And I do know that's what we must do today, is be strong and courageous, especially during this COVID-19. Somebody say, we are always talking about COVID-19. That is what's going on today. Yes. And so we must continue to pray because not only unchurched people are having problems, but I'm finding out that church people are having problems yes, during this time. Yes. So we must pray for everybody. But God did tell Joshua to be strong and courageous. So now at verse number 10 and 11, Joshua is on his own. And what I mean by that is God was still with him, but now it's time for Joshua to, to go from training to the actual work. Yes. And this is where we are right now. If you could read verse number 10 and 11. Verse 10, then Joshua commanded the officers of the people saying, pass through the host and command the people saying, prepare you victuals. For within three days, ye shall pass over this Jordan to go into to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. Wow. God, amen. Joshua, at this time, he had um, had to step out on faith. Yes, he did. Because now God is watching him, making sure everything that I've instructed you to do, Joshua, now is your time to do it. Pastor. Yes. Can I just inject? Uh -huh. He spoke to the officers of the people first. Yes. The people that you have in leadership. You know, it's so important, especially in this hour, that pastors all over the world, or whoever, if you have a business or whatever, your leaders, your That's key right. people, you keep in contact. You, he spoke to them first. And it's so important for us to be in line with what you were saying as our leader. That, that's true. The people would get the message right if we as leaders have the right heart and are relaying the same message as our leader is doing. You know what, Lady Wanda? The problem I find with most leaders and people in just church and even organizations, I find out that people want to be in charge. Wow. Everybody wants to be in charge. And because of that, that creates problems. Yes. Because there only can be one person in charge. One. And if there's one person in charge, then everybody should support that individual. Yes. So that we can reach the top or reach our goal, whatever it is. It could be church. It could be on your job. Yes. It could be in a business meeting. There's always going to be somebody that's going to challenge your authority. Or we would say the leader's authority. And, you know, we had a great example of this traveling from 1989 Austin Drive to uh, to where we are right now, from a 208 First Avenue mm -hmm. to 1989 Austin Drive. Our leader, Dr. Stuart Reese Jr., he was bringing us to a place where God had uh, shown him a vision for something greater and bigger. But we were complacent. We were just comfortable being where we were, you know, in this place that was paid off. God was moving there. Everything was good. And I can remember as we journeyed, there were times when, you know, we hear the mummer and the complaining. And as a leader, you've got to be able to say the right thing when you hear mummer and complaining as a leader. And I can remember coming to pastor at that time saying, 
Dad, do you think we could go back? When I tell you I have never seen him, he said, no, going back is not an option. God had almost like let him forsake that place because God had a better place for him. And sometimes we have to forsake some things and some people to go after what God is calling you to. Remember, the vision was given to one person. One. And sometimes people, everybody's not going to get the vision. One, God is going to speak to the head. Yes. And then he has to pass it on to the leaders or in the Bible, in the book of Joshua and Deuteronomy, it talks about officers. Yes. And so therefore, as he was getting his message from God, there were two to three million people. Oh my God. Israelites. Yes. Doing this. That's a lot of people. A whole lot of people. I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with just three or four hundred. <laughs> when you're talking about two to three million so that means he had to have people over this group and another group and another group. And then he had to speak to all of his leaders to make sure that everybody was in line. So Joshua was very organized. The Bible said mm -hmm. that he put some over thousands, some yeah. over hundreds, some yes. over ten. So yeah. you couldn't lightly esteem mm -hmm. who you were placed over. It meant a whole lot to take us to where we were going. That's true. And I had to get in line as a leader. I'm just going to be <laughs> honest with you. And my pastor, my husband at the time had to help me. He said, Wanda, you're not saying the same thing that the pastor saying. You're saying what the people are saying. And when I learned that lesson, I started pouring into my the, the choir, the group that I was over. And we started singing songs that was going to take us into a place. The Lord will provide. Mm -hmm. I've got one desire. Those songs took us in. And we were able to, to have a mindset of a pastor at that time now, that's to so, move forward. That's so true. That's why Joshua spoke with words of faith yes. and encouragement. Yes. He said during that time, words that we wouldn't say maybe today, ye shall pass mm -hmm. over or ye shall possess the land or the Lord will give it to you. Today, we would say something like, you can make it or we will survive. Or I know the Lord will make a way somehow. This is what we would say today to the church today. Yes. And even in any organization. Now, the motto that my pastor, which was Bishop Stuart Reese Jr. had, was we're going to the yield. Yes. Which means that whatever struggles that we have, we're still going to get to the hill. That's right. And what he was saying is we're going to build this church, this edifice, yes. this temple for the Lord. And you know what? We did. We did. We did. Many, some people didn't believe it, but God did it. Yes. And, and it's, it's a wonderful thing to know when people are working together. Yes. It's a wonderful thing even in a family. You can just take a look at your family right now if you're at home. And when you all work together, it makes things so much. So much. I mean, it's a smooth transition in the house. Every home, I will say, must be a home of peace. Yes. Must be a home of love. Yes. And unity. Yes. And when you have that in your home, and the name of Jesus must be spoken in your house, too. And you must have order. That's right. You must have That's order. That's right. So Israel's possession of the land was conditional. Mm -hmm. You know, many times we make our requests known to the Lord, but then we got to meet some conditions. Requirements, yes. Yeah. There's always a prerequisite oh for you to God. get from one place to another place. <laughs> yes. Many times we want God to do everything for us, but what are you doing for the Lord? Yes. There was a song in the world, and <laughs> I know most church people know, what have you done for me lately? Lord and God. that's what the Lord is asking us today. Yes, he is. What have we done for him lately? Yes. I know we have many excuses. Lord, when I tried to do this and I tried to do that, the Lord does not want to hear our excuses no. every time. No. And we, he does understand many times we do have some um, legitimate um, excuses, but it cannot be all the time. No, We must give God our service, our best, and we must try to do that all the time. Yes. Um, when we look in this, uh, also in these two verses, Lady Wanda, uh, we must remember too that Joshua was trying to... Um, the older generation, the same words that he said right the same now. Same words. He said these same words Four when days. when Moses was yes, alive. Yes, he did. And when Moses was alive, but what happened was these people they were disobedient, and you know what? They left. They died off the scene. Yes. And we don't want God 
to do that with us. Whatever the Lord is speaking through our leader, we want to be obedient. Yes. And because of that, what God do? He sent some new folks. Yes, he did. A generation yeah. who will believe. That's right. Will believe the leader that God had placed before them. That's so good. Yes. This, this is really good because we need to know that it is important that we are in tune with our leader. Yes, it is. And really, especially right through here, mm -hmm. everybody, whoever's listening to me, whatever church that you belong to, yes. whoever is your spiritual leader, you should be in tune with them right now. Yes. Especially when there's a crisis. People should hear from their leader. This is the time that we all should put our forces, our effort together. Hey, as we would say, your money's together. Yes. Let's put our food together. Yes. Amen. And let's do the things that God wants us to do. Amen. If you could read verse 2, 13, 12, 13, and 14. All right. And to the Reubenites and to the Gadites and to half the tribe of Manasseh spake Joshua saying, remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, the Lord your God hath given you rest and have given you this land. Your wives, your little ones, and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side of Jordan. But ye shall pass before your brethren armed, all the mighty men of valor, and help them. You know, the uh, Reubenites and the Gadites and the, what, the tribe of Manasseh. Uh, Manasseh, they were just like, we would say, um, borderline believers. They were just settling for that land that was on the on this side oh of Jordan. But God had so much more for them. Yes. But they were just satisfied with well, it. They almost, were. It's almost like to say there's a dollar sitting over there, but you're satisfied with this dime that's over closer to you. So you don't even want to bother with that dollar. And so God had so much more for them. And I will say, even with us as human beings, as individuals, as a body of baptized believer, God has so much more for us. Yes. If we just step out on faith. Oh my God. All we got to do is just trust him and just step out and be obedient to his word and believe, as we would say, the sky is the limit. Yes, it is. And when we know that the sky is the limit, there's nothing that God won't do for us. And when I thought about where, when I look back and see at uh, 208 First Avenue, I see mm -hmm. where we are now. I could not, I said, Lord, only a visionary, a man of God who had vision like that could bring us to a place like this here and mm -hmm. obeying God's word. And I'm, I, you know, I pray for visionaries all over. And what I could tell anyone is get behind the man of God, the woman of God, get behind the visionary mm -hmm. because the vision is going to come to pass. God's word will come to pass. Yes. One of those verses you just read um, talked about Joshua reminded them to remember, amen, their commitment mm -hmm. to fight for the land. And so that's very important. Yes, too, it is. Because what we say, our promise, our pledge, Amen. What we say should be, our words should be our bond. And that's what the old folks would say. Amen. Our words should be our bond. If we say, if we say we're going to do something, then we must be about our father's business. Yes. If you promise your spiritual leader, even a parent, parents, we must be very careful what we promise our children. Uh, yes. Because children remember. Yes, they do. They remember. Daddy said he's going to bring me some candy. Yes. Today. And dad, if you don't bring that candy. Oh, my God. Believe me, your children are going to remind you mm -hmm. that you didn't bring what you said. You didn't do what you said you were going to do. And so it was very important. We also must remember that God expressed us to honor our commitment that we make. So our yes. words carry power. The, the the Bible says that. Yes. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Mm -hmm. And when we speak into the atmosphere, God listens for his word. That's and he right. will perform his word. So that's why we got to be careful. What are we speaking into the atmosphere? If we're saying, I can't do this, I can't, you won't do it. God will not come and he will not follow that word. So the enemy, he will follow that word and you will never do it. But when we're speaking God's word, he listens for it in the atmosphere and he goes after his word to perform it for us. Yes. And it would remind me of another scripture talking about be uh, hearers, don't be hearers of his word, but be doers. Yes. And, and many times, and this is today, 
many of us before COVID-19, we said, Lord, I'll do whatever you said. I trust you. I take you at your word. But now since this has happened, mm -hmm. their people, their faith has been weakened. Oh, my God. And, and we cannot allow that to happen. Our faith looked like it was going to be weakened, but yes. we had history yes. with the leader that God That's has true. placed before That's us. So true. We had such history. We have seen God do some phenomenal things, mm -hmm. just time back to back. God kept performing his word for Bethesda Cathedral, so we had no reason not to doubt what God was going to do now. That, and so you true. have no reason to doubt what God's going to do in this hour. Mm -mm. And sometimes we just don't want to take the next step because yeah. it's too much oh, work. Oh, God. You know, I'd rather just stay right here because I don't have to do anything. Lord, God. But we, you don't realize when you take the next step, you may have to go through something, but the blessing is much greater. And we must do that even right now. You were talking about uh, doing the natural. Yes. We want the supernatural so bad, but we don't want to do the natural. That's right. Faith without works is dead. That's We've so got true. to do the natural things to see the supernatural manifest. So that's, we had to step out. That's so we true. We had to be obedient and step out. Hmm. And it, if we had a sorrow, what we had to go through, we probably would have turned back. <laughs> but faith is not by what you see. You got to trust God. We don't walk by what we see. We got to really trust God every step of the way. Could you read verse uh, 15? Yes, until the Lord have given your brethren rest as he hath given you, mm -hmm. and they also have possessed the land which the Lord your God giveth them, then you shall return unto the land of your possession mm -hmm. and enjoy it, which Moses the Lord's servant gave you on this side of Jordan toward mm -hmm. the sun rising. So we don't need to settle for second best. No, sir. Don't settle no. for second best. No. There's nothing wrong with going to Goodwill. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with that. But if God got something great for you, yes. then you need to do that. That's it. You need to accept it. And and that's what uh, Joshua was trying to tell his people. You know, uh -huh. and the enemy wasn't stopping them. They were stopping themselves. That's true. We can't blame everything on the enemy. The devil mm -hmm. did this. The people of God were walking in a place of disobedience, but mm -hmm. this group was ready to walk in obedience and believe God. You know, I was uh, thinking about this uh, story that Bishop Reed said. He said the devil was sitting, it's a long, old story. <laughs> he said the devil was just sitting on the side of the church, on the front steps of the church, and he was boo-hooing and crying, and somebody asked him, what's wrong, devil? The devil said, they blame me for everything. <laughs> Amen. And many times we do. Yes, we, we do. We blame God for We blame everything. the devil for everything. But we have to look at ourselves and, and realize that we are the ones that come short of his glory. That's it. We are the ones that quit. Yes. Because God has equipped us to finish the task. We had his word uh -huh. and right. we had the promise of his presence. That's right. We and, can do this. And he wants us to be victorious. Yes. And God had set up Joshua in good fashion. To win. Oh, because yeah. Joshua had a great mentor, which was Moses. Mm -hmm. Then after Moses died, then God spoke and, and specifically to Joshua. Yes, he did. And gave him instructions. Yes. Therefore, he passed it on yes. to his officers yes. and to his leaders. Verse number 16 through 18. And they answered Joshua saying, all that thou commandest us, we will do. And whithersoever thou sendest us, we will go. According as we hearken unto Moses in all things, so will we hearken unto thee. Only the Lord thy God be with thee as he was with Moses. Whosoever he be that doeth rebel against thy command and will not hearken unto the words of all that thou commandest him, he shall be put to death. Only be strong and of good courage. You know, when the mantle was passed on from Moses to Joshua, you know, sometimes when we make changes in organizations or churches, sometimes we make too many drastic changes. Uh -huh. But you notice in the scripture that whatever uh, Moses said, mm -hmm. Joshua stepped, he um, said, we're going to do what Moses did. He and knew those he laws said, up and down. That's he true. meditated on it. He, he studied it so he could, he could pour it back out to the people. Yes. And because of that, they responded to Joshua in a positive way. Yes. They were willingly and they were eager. I do believe... We use the word uh, commitment. He told them to be committed, 
But even when you're committed to something, you must be eager to get the job done. You must be involved in something. And the children of Israel, they were involved with Joshua during this time. And when you are involved in something, that means that you have a desire to want to do it. Yes. And because of that, that's how we accomplish our goal. I hate for people to do, to serve, but with a bad attitude. And God does too. Yes. So he at, this, it. at this point, they had an excellent attitude. Yes. They were willingly and they were eager mm -hmm. to serve. Yes. When people, I hate to go to a restaurant and somebody just say, bring my food and say, here. That's right. And, and you know, I'd be wanting to say, here back, <laughs> you know, take this food. Because I don't know what I don't you care how good it is. Yeah, I don't a care bad how good. serve will mess up a good meal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so, so what happened was, as they obeyed Moses before he died, mm -hmm. they obeyed Joshua. They obeyed Joshua. And, and it's good to have people in a congregation or in an organization where you had the previous leader. Mm -hmm. The people are still very supportive yes. because they realize the goal or the mission statement of that particular organization. Yes. And so what they're saying is now we have a new leader, mm -hmm. but we're going to support and we're going to do all we can for this leader so that we can get the job done. And as we get the job done, who gets the glory? God. God gets the glory. You have had, and I just want to say, and uh -huh. I know Pastor does, we've had people that would text in, thank you, Pastor Lady Wanda. Those words have been so encouraging and it's given us strength to be strong and courageous to pursue whatever God mm -hmm. is saying in this hour so we can all possess the land. And, and another thing is when people encourage the leader. Yes. Amen. It is a blessing. Amen. When people are obedient, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. When people, you know, many times people think, well, it has to be money, but it could just be a call. It could be a text. Yes. It could be, I'm praying for you. Yes. And, and that's what we have to do with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Right through here, we may have to make extra phone calls. Yes. To call them to say, hey, I was just thinking about you. Mm -hmm. I'm praying for you. Uh, even if the pastor hasn't called these folks, yes. sometimes people can be, as we would say in this day and time, people can be messy. Mm -hmm. And and what I'm saying by that is they can say, did the pastor call? No, but you call, you oh. represent the church. Yes. And so that what we should be able to do in this day and time is to cover our leaders yes. in a positive manner. Yes. When we don't cover our leaders in a positive manner, then shame on you. Amen. One thing that I learned before I became the leader, before I became the pastor, was that I wanted to be a good follower. I did whatever the pastor told me. Yes. I've been under, as an adult, I've been under two pastors. I must say my father, which is my um, Bishop Stuart Reese Jr., and also my other father, which is Bishop uh, uh, Brown, Thomas, Thomas Brown, Brown in Portland, Oregon. Mm -hmm. And one thing I will say is I did everything that they wanted me to do in the sense of following their leadership. Amen. As they follow God, as they follow Christ, I follow them. Mm -hmm. It's hard for me to take a person and say, I only follow God because God has placed men and women on this earth that we are supposed to honor. Yes, He's placed spiritual leaders and also he's placed natural leaders such yes. as kings, such as um, our supervisors and our managers on our job. We should be obedient to these individuals. Amen. And when we do that, that's when we can accomplish the goal that God has for us. So as we read, read all of these verses tonight, um, verse 10 through 18, what Joshua was doing, he was preparing the people to get to the promised land. Amen. And I do know when we're obedient, when we are united, mm -hmm. when we are faithful, we can get to the promised yes, land. Yes, we can. Whatever God has set us to do. And I know in there, in a church, they may have, this is what we're going to do in phase one. Mm -hmm. This is what we're going to do in phase two. This is what we're going to do after we complete phase three and et cetera and et yes. cetera. But in order to accomplish goals, and when we look at other ministries and other churches, you wonder how did they get to where they got? And the reason why is because they were unified and they stuck together. Yes. And they were set up and organized just the way Joshua 
was with the children of Israel. Amen. I, I just thank God for this lesson because we know that in order to be blessed, amen, it's going to be a challenge yes, it is. to possess God's blessing. It's going to be a real challenge. Yes. And many times we may have to go through some things. Yeah. And I know we can we can just testify all night. We can we can extend this Bible study yes, we to can. all <laughs> night for everybody. But we won't do that at this time. But we're just so glad that you were able to tune in. Do you have anything to say, Lady Wanda? I just wanted to encourage yes. any leader to uh, not to lightly esteem your place because God has God allowed the pastor or whoever you're over to select leaders that were that had the right heart, had the right mindset that could deliver the right message to the people. And I just want you to be encouraged. God is listening for the words that you're you're sending to the body. So I want you to let it be life. And I want you to speak the same thing that your pastor and your leader is saying because there's a blessing on the other side for you. And I'm a witness. I have seen it and I know God will do it for you. So we're going to say this, be strong yes, and, and courageous. courageous. May God bless you at this time. We're going to have a word of prayer. Lady Wanda, would you lead us? Father, thank you so much, God, once again for this opportunity, Lord, to share your word, God. We thank you right now. Whatever the challenge that we are facing, God, you are with us, God. We have your word with us and we have the promise of your presence. You have not left us nor forsaken us. And Father, we thank you right now. For We pray for leaders, pastors, God, all over this world, God. You're not even looking at denominations, but you're looking for your people that will follow God leadership, that will follow you, God, and hear what you have to say, that we may get the blessings that you have on the other side, God. We thank you for crossing this Jordan, God, with your help, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again, and may God continue to bless you.